In Hollywood, branding is big, and you can either create a brand or buy one, as Universal has done with Dr. Seuss. But while the Dr. Seuss brand has tremendous name recognition, the elements that make for such delightful children's stories make for uneven family entertainment. Originally, Ted Geisel, a.k.a. Dr. Seuss's stories, had found new life on television, where they were very well received. And after all, his unique style seemed a perfect fit with the 1960s and 70s. But when he passed away in 1991, his widow Audrey thought bigger and cozied up to Universal Studios. However, much to her dismay, Universal was also thinking bigger. They added some Tinseltown sparkle to How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Seuss Landing in Orlando's Islands of Adventure, the musical Seussical, and The Cat in the Hat. That last one was one too many, and Audrey Geisel closed the door on any further live-action adaptations of her husband's work. But eventually, five years later, Blue Sky Studios got the rights to do an animated version of Horton Hears a Who, which delighted audiences and Mrs. Geisel. Then, as fate would have it, Chris Melodondry, who'd overseen Horton Hears a Who for Fox Animation, started up his own animation studio that ended up with Universal. Therefore, under the direction of Melodondry's Illumination Entertainment, the studio behind Despicable Me, two more Dr. Seuss projects are in the works. The first is The Lorax, Dr. Seuss's environmental fable about a tiny little creature who speaks for the trees. Danny DeVito, Zac Efron, Ed Helms, Betty White, and Taylor Swift all lend their voices to this 3D animated flick. And the behind-the-scenes talent draws from the teams of both Horton Hears a Who and Despicable Me. You can bet that Universal will put a big push behind the Lorax when it opens in March 2012, as Illumination Entertainment is shaping up to be the studio's answer to Pixar and DreamWorks Animation. But Illumination Entertainment is even planning to go one step further than those other animation studios, producing its first live-action film, a biography of Dr. Seuss starring none other than Johnny Depp, that is said to feature some animated flourishes. This is a Disney-esque move and is proof of Universal's tremendous faith in Melodondry. They're essentially allowing him to make his own version of Mary Poppins. Furthermore, in light of some of Pixar's best talent leaving to do live-action fare, this is certainly a direction that they'd like to evolve in as well. However, with Disney itself pilfering Pixar's top-notch talent like Andrew Stanton for John Carter of Mars, it seems unlikely they'll allow it. As for when we'll get to see Johnny Depp as Dr. Seuss, it'll be a while, as he first has to finish shooting Dark Shadows for Warner Brothers, and then The Lone Ranger for Disney. So do you think Chris Melodondry is the new Chuck Jones when it comes to faithful Dr. Seuss adaptations? And are you more excited for the Lorax or the Dr. Seuss bio? Write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.